Dear students of class 8A and 8B, you are welcome to this history class. Today's lesson is the same March towards freedom, 1917 to 1947. Points as I mentioned, Congress session 1929, Civil Disobedience Movement, Dandi March, Government of India 1935, Consequence of Civil Disobedience Movement. The first point, Congress session of 1929. You know, in the year 1929, a session was held at Lahore with Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru as the president. The session adopted a resolution on 26th uh, January 1930. The session also decided a civil disobedience movement, a, a movement, uh, a nationwide movement to achieve complete independence of Purno Sarabh. This day was observed as Independence Day every year until the Congress, until India got independence on. 15th August 1947. This is very important session because on the on that very uh, uh, on that very session, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru raised India's first tricolor flag beside the river Ravi of Pakistan during midnight, and it was the first. It was one of the most important historic session of the Congress. Under the presidency of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Congress took an oath that they would continue to struggle until their country would gain complete independence, liberty, freedom from the British. And for that reason, this session is a very important session. And next point. Civil Disobedience Movement. The Civil Disobedience Movement was a movement started by the Congress. At Lahore session, it was decided to, uh, to launch a Civil Disobedience Movement at Lahore session of the Congress under the presidency of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. You know, the non-cooperation movement was called up by Mahatma Gandhi because Gandhiji's movement which was based on non-violent method of Shaktagraha, non-cooperation movement at the 11th hour became violent. That's why Gandhiji was compelled to withdraw the non-cooperation movement. So the non-cooperation movement which was withdrawn by Gandhiji left some pending works. So now the Congress workers decided, the Congress leaders decided to complete that very pending work of non-cooperation movement through a newly introduced movement, a new, a new movement, the civil disobedience movement. That's why civil disobedience movement was launched by the Congress in the year 1930 with a view to start new a technique and new method of uh, Shaktagraha, non-violent method of Shaktagraha against the British and it was done with that very historic expedition Dandi March. Dandi March, Dandi was a place near Gujarat Sisu. Mahatma Gandhi along with his 78 followers left Sabarmati Ashram for Dandi Thousands of people joined them. Now, what was the reason Gandhiji uh, took an expedition for Dandi under the sort, under the system, under the terms of the salt law of the British? No Indian was allowed to make salt from the sea water, but the Britishers. In the meantime, the British increased 
taxes on salt gandhi ji requested them to increase uh, to decrease the uh, to uh, uh, exempt tax from the salt because salt was an item used by basically lar a large section of poor people of india so they would be unable to pay the extra amount of money but the british did not hear the british did not have any interest to uh, exempt the tax from salt gandhi ji grew angry and he decided to make dandi expedition why this time gandhi ji decided to break salt law how by making salt uh, by making uh, you know salt from the sea water so thousands of his followers along with 78 followers reached Dan dandi and beside the sea shore whenever they reached uh, gandhi ji uh, along with his followers started making law by boiling sea water so this was an this was a historic expedition under the leadership of gandhi ji by doing it gandhi ji broke the british salt law and uh, uh, at the same time gandhi ji Uh, uh, the British government decided to. After that, Gandhi ji started the uh, Gandhi ji directly participate participated in the civil disobedience movement. The uh, very civil disobedience movement became very very active, very very active throughout throughout the country. People of all sections, people of all parts of our country, they took part in the civil disobedience movement. so the wave of anger the you know uh, direct resistance towards the british government uh, policy uh, through that very movement civil disobedience movement uh, you know uh, uh, made uh, and made the british administration uh, uh, useless the british were unable the british government was unable to make Uh, to pass uh, or uh, to pass policies of their government neither they could uh, 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 make any work everywhere there was non cooperation of the indians and so the british felt very much uh, very much um, uh, sorry the british uh, sorry the british felt very much uh, uh, anxious and as a result the british decided to imprison a number of indian uh, indian people along with congress leaders near about 60000 people were imprisoned under the under uh, under the uh, british law during when the civil disobedience movement uh, was uh, uh, was encouraging indian people so mass became a part of that very uh, movement and dandi march which also encouraged indian people which also gave them oxygen to fight against the british so uh, for that reason the british government uh, declared congress to be illegal party and near about 60000 peace for satyagrahis were uh, were uh, were taken into the custody by the british but the people of india they started the program of uh, program of boycotting foreign goods they refused they started refusing to pay taxes revenues the british government took stern action stern measures against them to crush the movement and ultimately what happened the civil disobedience movement uh, the gandhi ji uh, under huge pressure did not withdraw the civil disobedience movement like non cooperation movement once he Uh, called up it and uh, and for doing it he was criticized by uh, the congress workers that's why this time gandhi ji uh, was uh, uh, firmly determined not to withdraw the civil disobedience movement but the british government realized that the threat um, realized that the movement uh, made the entire system of administration stand still that's why in the year april uh, in the year 1933 april you know more than 1 lakh indians were imprisoned including gandhi ji so this led 
to uh, set back in the civil disobedience movement as there was no one to lead lead it lead the movement so the movement was ultimately called off by the year 1935 and next point the government of india act next point the government of india act what is government of india act the government of india act was passed in the year 1935 with a view to provide certain uh, administrative uh, facilities to the Indian Congress leaders. Now, what were these? Number one, India would become a federation of the act, then half of the princely states join it. That means India would become a fe federation if more than half of the princely states joined it. That means it is depending on the Indian princely states whether they would join if they would uh, if they would agree to join to join the uh, join the government in that case india would become a federation under the terms of the government of india act of 1935 and second one the act divided powers between the center and the provinces provincial autonomy was granted but the government decided to divide power between the center and the provinces because there are so many provinces throughout the country. So the British decided to give importance of uh, independence. That's why they divided uh, the administrative system into two categories. One category was for administ uh, one for category was for center and another one for provinces. Next one, next one a federal court was established at Delhi for the resolution of disputes between the provinces and also between the center and the provinces. It was to have one uh, chief justice uh, and not more than six judges. So a federal court also was established in order to uh, solve the disputes between the center and the provinces and the provinces and, uh, and uh, between the center and provinces and <coughs> They also appointed one chief justice in order to solve the problems, in order to provide smooth, smooth justice for uh, uh, any kind of problems arised. And later on, they also appointed a number of six judges in order to assist the work of the chief justice. And next one, direct election were introduced. For the first time, but only 14% of the population had voting rights. Direct election would be, uh, was introduced, but 14% people were allowed to uh, cast their votes in that election. And DRT was declared to be illegal, uh, declared to be abolished at the provincial level, but was introduced at the center, DRT. And next one, the Vaisra became more and more powerful. Thus, the British Parliament uh, established its influence and supremacy over the Indian legislatures by increasing the power of the Viceroy. And next one, the Congress. What was the effect of that Government of India Act of 1935? The Congress rejected the, uh, uh, the Government of India Act of 1935. Why? Because the government granted provincial autonomy. The government increased the power of the viceroys. But the governors and viceroys had special powers, but not any minister who joined um, in the election. And only 14% seats were reserved. 14% voters were allowed to cast their votes in the election. They declare uh, election day into the system, the system they introduced. In the year 1939, when the Second World War <coughs> was started, the British government, without consulting any Indian leader, they declared that India also had become a part of the Second World War. So it grew, so Indian Congress leaders grew very much offended. It harmed their sentiments that in spite of being Indian, the British did not consult them before declaring that India already had become a part of the Second World War. India stated that if the British wanted India's cooperation in the war, in that case they, would, they were ready to join the Second World War provided 
they would have to accept their demand of complete independence they would have to accept the uh, the uh, independence of india but the british did not agree with that demand so in the year 1940 the congress launched the individual satyagrahi movement the individual satyagraha movement and selected certain satyagrahis to oppose the war and to and finally they were arrested so this was a program of gandhi ji known as jail bharo andolon jail bharo andolon that means you uh, uh, you uh, uh, arrest us and send to the jail we are ready to go to jail we are ready to be imprisoned that's why the gandhi ji started the jail bharo andolon on this call in the year 19 in the year on this very call 25000 satyagrahis were you know uh, were arrested during that very time where gandhi ji's uh, most important program jail bharo andolon started so up to this my dear students next day the remaining uh, points will be taught to you thank you